Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing the long-anticipated Audiolab D9 DAC headphone amp. This is a stunning yet affordable desktop audio DAC with some amazing features associated with its headphone amplification, decoding of MQA, a very, very high resolution DSD, and uh, look, operational noise floor is immeasurably low. It uses ESS Pro DAX. Uh, look, absolutely stunning. Now, conceptually or loosely, it's based around the uh, Audio Lab 9000A integrated amp. Okay, it's up here. So very similar, we're going to see, obviously, and as always, hang around for the photograph. But look, we'll see the fact that it's got an excellent full color display. You can even change it to have a VU meter or, or digital, so all of these cool things that we've grown to love in their amplifiers and their transports and things as well. Uh, it's available in black and silver. Today we're going to see this in silver. Um, as I mentioned, asynchronous USB, very high resolution files. Um, operationally, you can use it as a preamp, so it's got a variable or fixed output, both RCA and XLR. You can loop through it in the form of digital ins and outs, and yeah, really, really cool feature set. So, without further ado, let's have a look. Now, Audio Lab, um, what we're used to with the Audio Lab and integrated amplifiers and CD transports and sort of bigger stuff is this plastic wrap that comes on the box. So, the first thing we're going to do is just roll it over and get rid of that. And that enables us really, really easily to get into the uh, well, well, very well protected from the freight perspective box underneath. So, once we've got rid of that, of course, now we've got something that's just utterly perfect. Uh, that plastic wrapping has meant that it's not going to get damp in transit or getting rained on if it's sitting outside waiting for you to come home after the courier has dropped it off. Uh, screen printed with Audio Lab on the top. There's a bit of information about stacking, uh, some uh, implications of how good this is from a feature set perspective. It's got Bluetooth that's uh, 5.1 or something like that. Anyway, it's one of the very high resolution APTX standards. And you can stream if the source is capable of it up to CD quality via Bluetooth. It's room tested. It does uh, proper MQA uh, rendering. Um, oh, that's the APTX Bluetooth. Uh, LDAC DAC and uh, DSD audio as I implied. Obviously screen printed for Audio Lab and D9. On one side we see the fact that it's covered with a three year warranty and a QR code to gain access to Audio Lab's website should you need to register that. And the scannable information for both model and serial number and an implication carefully of its colour. Again, it's silver. Now, opening this like all the Audio Lab products, it's actually sealed closed with a sort of a, a paper tape. So, unlike clear plastic sort of packing tape, which can be snapped open, this requires a school cut. Opening it, you see the first thing is the D9's user manual. Now the manual itself is extremely comprehensive. There's even a little colour blurb about Rune uh, and about some of the other things feature set wise that it will handle. Um, it's again fully comprehensive. It has an initial start up, sort of a setup guide, quick setup at the front, and then dives into all manner of the settings and setups that you can deliver. In the back here we've got a massive desiccant bag and the accessories are off to one side. Now the accessory pack actually has a little sticker on it saying um, D9 uh, and opening those we see a couple of things. Firstly a gold plated USB A to B for the uh, USB input, a New Zealand uh, earthed 3 pin IEC power cord, a couple of AAA batteries and an Audio Lab remote control. Now the remote control is 
uh, it's a smaller form factor than the remote supplied with the larger traditional pieces. I guess it's very proportional to the physical size of it. And this is exactly the same remote that is supplied with the smaller D7. If you want to check that one out, the video is up here. Uh, nevertheless, it's got direct inputs for the digital uh, inputs, the uh, Bluetooth, the USB, and uh, the USB from a laptop streaming one, along with volume up and down and things along those lines. There's another little bag of some kind in there as well. Now, because it's relatively small, I'm just going to lift it out and put it off to one side before we get rid of the box. And then it's protected, finally, it's suspended in the middle of a chunk of clothes cell foam, ensuring it's never, ever going to be damaged in front of me. The amount of torture that that box has got to uh, come into before it gets this product suspended with such good packaging, um, you know, really, it's, it's a write-off if you ever, you know, it's obviously damaged, right, when you finally get it. Nevertheless, look, nicking these, a couple of nicks, gets the uh, semi-soft bag off. Very straightforward from that point of view as far as just then sliding the bag. Rolling it over and having a look at it for the first time. Now, as we would expect, it's following loosely the form factor of the 9000 series. So it's as tall as the 9000 amplifiers, certainly much larger in all respects to the more compact D7 DAC. The colour display is straight out of the 9000 series. And again, hang around for the photographs, we'll light it up and I'll show it to you. Nevertheless, we've got Audio Lab screen printed along the front, a simple standby, and the light illuminates dimly when it's in standby and, and bright when it's on. We've got a volume control and a selector, both of which are rotary encoders, enabling you to select and navigate the menu as well. The full colour display, it's not a touch screen, it doesn't need to be. And then the quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter uh, headphone output. The feet are straight out of the Audio Lab larger pieces and it's got rubber feet designed to sort of grip nicely the surface and it won't move or wobble around. Tilting it forward, we see the depth and a little bit of ventilation associated with it and the embossing or, or uh, stamping of the Audio Lab logo. Again, looking at it, it's about the same depth as the 9000 series. But it's at the back, we will see just how well appointed the product is. Firstly, we've got that Bluetooth aerial. Um, then over this side, we see a fused IEC input and a simple on-off rocker switch. There's an emulation of its serial number. And then there are the outputs, which from a quality perspective are absolutely stunning. Uh, the tapered RCAs for the single-ended, uh, they're clearly labelled and colour-coded black for left and red for right, and then in them, in between them, the balanced outputs. Now, even the single-ended RCA outputs have a signal-to-noise ratio of 118 dB. Now, that's immeasurably low as far as its operational noise floor, and it's absolutely stunning. And it's bettered again at 123 dB for the balanced outputs, Again, this is, this is an affordable piece, yet the quality of its DAX, ESS Pros, and the signal-to-noise means this is operationally utterly perfect. And then you look at the price and you realise how good it is competitively against all of its uh, other, other members in the industry, I guess. All the bits and pieces you could buy instead of this, which you won't. Nevertheless, working along, we see the digital outputs, again mirroring the circuit topography from an out perspective. We've got a coax and an optical. The optical has a grey uh, dust cap to imply it's an output, not an input. And it's subtle attention to detail that I like with this product as well. Then we've got a single coax, well sorry, uh, uh, coax 1 and 2, and optical coax 1, sorry, optical input 1 and 2 clearly labelled, and those are selectable from the front. Above the digital ends is the asynchronous USB, and beside it are two triggers. Now, these can be programmed to do different things if you require, so it could turn on a related product like a CD transport, or it could turn on an integrated amplifier that it is supporting as an external DAC. Then, 
Uniquely to this model, it supports the AESEBU input or balanced digital. Uh, the, the D9 does not support that, this one has it. Uh, and then we've got a USB um, Mark 1 amp 5 volts. Now, I made the mistake in the D7 uh, of not implying that this could actually accept a hard drive, and it will. Um, the hard drive is it, from a file structure perspective now that I've had a play with them you can actually navigate in and, and look at the music you would like to play off a hard drive. Now it won't support really really massive hard drives uh, those would need an external power supply to run them but realistically if you are using this in a streaming environment you're likely to have a streamer of some kind that you're wanting to better or you're likely to use some sort of um, a, a laptop or something along those lines to take advantage of the DSD. So nevertheless it's got a USB in input that will technically support an external hard drive although realistically the navigation is a little bit clunky if you're doing it that way. Nevertheless there's a few other things associated with compliance and licensing of MQA. It speaks about the uh, Bluetooth and the DSD audio and things as well. There's a screen printing of the Audio Lab logo on top of it too. Okay, there we have it. This little gem, the Audio Lab D9 DAC headphone amplifier. In fact, it's probably a preamp as well, so let's call it a DAC headphone amplifier and preamp all in one box. Lovingly unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.